Hello, everyone. Yes, Steffi is very right. Please start listening to birds and acknowledge that not, they're not just nice to listen to, but also there's bird groups that are highly intelligent, as intelligent as a chimpanzee, as a little child. So it's worthwhile. But I'm here to introduce Dr. Stefan Karl. He is research associate of the K. Lisa Young Center for Conservation Bioacoustics of Cornell Lab of Ornithology, Ithaca, New York, and concurrently at Chemnitz University of Technology in Germany. And he's an, I, an AI expert working on deep learning of um, computer vision and bioacoustics, as well as um, um, med medical, me um, medical um, imagery, among many other topics. But most importantly, he has invented a very simple tool that is crucial for tackling one of the greatest challenges our world is uh, facing nowadays, namely stopping the great um, extinction of species. So we are, uh, we are facing an extinction event, a mass extinction event, um, greater than the, than the one of the dinosaurs many million years ago. And um, at this time it is man-made, and um, it's closely intertwined with climate change and of equal importance, but this, despite, despite of its scale, it's still unfolding without many people taking notice of it. But now back to Stefan Karl, because he is the inventor and developer of BirdNet, an AI tool and also an app that can identify avian species based on their vocalizations automatically. And this is, he's really cracked automatic bird identification by sound. Only one and a half years ago, there were just a few algorithms that were capable of recognizing maybe yeah, a handful of bird species automatically and not with very great um, reliability. But BirdNet nowadays can recognize over 6,000 bird species and every, every day more with great precision. It really is starting a new era for conservation with with bioacoustic monitoring playing a key role. Um, and I'm also very happy that Stefan Karl is supporting us with our citizen science project Dawn Chorus. I hope many of you have heard of it. It's a project that Biotopia, the future life sciences museum of Bavaria, and the uh, Max Planck Institute of Ornithology have initiated in, in the onset of the COVID pan pandemic. And it's engaging people around the globe with bird song and its importance for conservation. And um, people, around, people around the globe are collecting data for biodiversity monitoring using an app. And um, yes, but um, we are focusing on the early morning concert of, of the birds, because during that time, the majority of birds can be captured with just a few minutes. So you know what's living in a particular area. And you can also tell um, over time, it tells us about changes in habitat quality and species composition. So it's a valuable tool. Um, but now back to Stefan Karl and BirdNet. Please remember all to download, uh, install the apps, both Dawn Chorus and BirdNet, and engage with nature and biodiversity. And enjoy Stefan's talk. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Auguste. Um, thanks, everyone, for having me. Um, what I'm going to do is I will briefly introduce our AI system that we built to recognize bird sounds, and I'm going to tell you why we implemented it um, and why we built it. Um, and I think it is important to understand that when it comes to biodiversity and tracking biodiversity progress, the first thing we will notice is that if you look at this graph that most of you might have seen, um, if we continue with business as usual, we will see a steep decline in biodiversity worldwide. So what we'd actually have to do if we really want to bend the curve for biodiversity, we really have to put 
um, the measures in place, and we really have to facilitate change in order to achieve that. And the thing is, if we do that, and we've heard a few things, we heard in these panel discussions that companies and NGOs and all institutions and organizations are implementing these changes, but then we need to know, do they actually have an impact? Like, how do we know if we're actually bending the curve? And what I would like to propose today is a tool or a set of tools that we could use that could be a part of um, tracking these biodiversity changes. And the tool that I'm talking about is passive acoustic monitoring. Um, and bioacoustics in general. Um, and typically, if you think about passive acoustic monitoring, what you can do is you put these recording units out in a certain habitat or an ecosystem, it could be a forest, you strap them to a tree, there's batteries inside, there's a microphone at the bottom, and then there's a small, tiny processor in it that would just like do um, recording of the, um, of the environment. And it's a very non-intrusive method of monitoring ecosystem dynamics. You get a continuous data collection, um, it has very low disturbance to species, and you can actually monitor in very challenging terrains because you only have to go there once. Deploy the units and then leave them there and they will record. Um, if we do uh, passive acoustic monitoring, what are we actually listening for? And Augusta mentioned it, it is birds. But then, why birds? And the reason is birds are indicators. Birds are indicators for ecosystem health because they're very sensitive to environmental changes and they rapidly respond because of their rapid breeding cycles. So within a few years, you can actually track progress in bird populations and this will tell you something about the ecosystem health. Birds are globally distributed, so whenever you have a system in place that works in one location, you can deploy it to other locations worldwide because everywhere you go, there's birds. Birds are also culturally super important, and it's, it's relatively easy to engage your local communities because to most of them, birds are important. And then the most important thing, of course, birds are vocal. And that's why they, uh, why they are an, an easy target to record. So what we do is, um, if we want to use BirdNet and our AI system to actually implement change in the first place, what you would do is you would start to record sounds through passive acoustic monitoring, you would store that in an archive, and then you would run the analysis. You could do this by hand, you could do this manually, but then someone would have to sit down and listen to all of these recordings, and that could be terabytes and terabytes of recordings. So like, we need to automate this process, and so that's why we built BirdNet to help with that process. Um, BirdNet can recognize more than 6,000 species. It is super efficient and runs fast, even on a workstation, a workstation PC, and it is accessible. And then you get the results, you get the species that BirdNet detected, you can interpret the result, and then you can make a decision based on the birds that you've heard. And if you do that over large um, spatial temporal scales, and if you do this continuously, and if you go back and if you repeat this cycle, what you can then actually do is you can use BirdNet to actually track progress, because the next year you're going out, you record again, store it in an archive, you analyze again, you get the results, interpret them, and then track progress, because you know what you recorded the year before. Um, BirdNet is available on all different kinds of platforms. We build it in a way that it can be run on many different devices. And of course, the first one at the top left, that's like a passive recording unit, has an SD card in it. You collect the SD card, do the analysis, but it can also run on a mobile phone. We've seen that. We have an app, it's called BirdNet. You can run it on uh, self-sustained uh, solar-powered units that you just put out there once and they will record and they actually do the processing on device. You can put this out in uh, your backyard with these commercially available units called HaikuBox. Um, you can do drop-off monitoring on these kind of bio blitzes with these handheld devices. You drop them off, you record, you do the processing, you do the analysis, and then you know what kind of what bird species you heard. Or you have like these massive units that do 24/7 monitoring, are solar powered, they have a backup battery, and you can deploy them, and, and they can last for years. Um, BirdNet is open source, and I think that is super important because these technologies have to be accessible. We have to um, spread the word and get it into hands of um, conservation practitioners and biologists. Again, BirdNet supports 6,000 plus bird species. There's 10,000 bird species in the world, so that's like roughly 60%. So there's still a way, uh, still some way to go. Um, we support multi-OS. Um, we have a programming, uh, programmable interface, but we also have a GUI, which is important for ecologists who do not have a computer science background. And we do have a very active community. And that's the beauty of open sourcing, is that it engages people that are somewhat related to what you're doing, and they can actually contribute, and you don't have to do it all by yourself. 
And one of the things that came out of it is bird weather, which is totally community driven. It's based on our open source algorithm and it collects data from these 24 seven backyard listening station and it submits results in real time. So if you have enough of these stations, you can actually track biodiversity um, or at least bird species diversity in real time on a global scale. So to sum up, if you think about bending the curve, we know, okay, we have to implement these, these um, effective measures. We have to somehow track the progress, but we have to do it together. Like it takes everyone, each and every one of us to actually help to bend the curve. And it takes the tools that we can use like to um, put this into the hands of practitioners, put this into the hands of citizen scientists so that everyone can engage. That's what we tried with BirdNet. If you like to learn more about BirdNet, make sure to check out our website at birdnet.cornell.edu, or I'll be around um, today and tomorrow, and I'm, I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Thank you. Thank you.